I took a few steps and took off. The houses and people seemed tiny from such a height, and my fear came back. Did I really need all this? But it was too late. I'd already learned to fly. Hi, my name is Ben, and I'm 16 years old. I used to be a real loser. I didn't have any friends at school, and the girls never noticed me. It wasn't surprising. I spent almost all the time studying, so I didn't know how to talk to people at all, and was even happy when they forgot to invite me anywhere. But one day, everything changed. That day, I was going home as usual, when Miranda, the most beautiful girl in school, suddenly came up to me. My breath caught from the excitement. What did she want from me? And then, Miranda suggested something I hadn't been expecting. To go to a climbing wall together in the evening. I was so shocked, I didn't think it through and automatically agreed. But the most frightening thing wasn't Miranda suddenly paying attention to me. It was my fear of heights. When I was five years old, my family had gone on vacation. When the plane had gained altitude, I'd started screaming so hard the pilots had to land at the closest airport. Since then, I had been afraid to even look out of the window on a high-rise building. It is little wonder that even the thought of climbing a wall made me panic. But at that moment, everyone was looking at Miranda and me, so there was nothing I could do but agree to come. I accepted her offer, which of course, I greatly regretted. Before the date, I told my older brother about my problem. Dean worked as an instructor in a paragliding club and knew everything about victories over heights. He suggested I close my eyes and mentally count to 10 as soon as I get nervous. But it seemed I was a lost cause. After climbing only 5 meters, I felt my blood run cold. Horrified, I looked down to where Miranda was standing. She was waving cheerfully to me, having no idea what kind of hell I was going through at that moment. I turned back to the wall and squeezed my eyes shut. But neither after 10 nor 50 seconds did it get any easier. My hands started to shake and I realized I was about to fall and hang from the ropes like a rag doll. I don't remember what I shouted then, but the instructor got up to me and carefully helped me down. I was so embarrassed. I was already imagining how much Miranda would laugh at me when she suddenly ran up to me and hugged me. Everyone has something they're afraid of. There's no reason to be ashamed of it, she said. Her words brought me back to life. We left the climbing wall, took a long walk through the streets, and chatted about anything and everything. That was the first time I felt how nice it was when someone other than your relatives was interested in you. The new feelings were still there the next morning. I came to school feeling happier than ever. All of a sudden, I got surrounded by boys. My classmate Alain asked me mockingly, The computer science class is on the fifth floor, so you probably won't come, right? Everyone around me roared with laughter, and I started to look around for Miranda for support. But as luck would have it, she wasn't there. Things got even worse in the classroom. The boys were laughing behind my back, and I couldn't understand what was going on because no one had paid such attention to me before. But later, everything became clear to me. I went to the school group chat and saw a video uploaded from an anonymous account. In the video, the instructor was lowering me from the climbing wall in his arms. I'd never felt so ashamed before. At that moment, I realized why Miranda had asked me out on a date. Now, she could be proud of herself. She had managed to film the school nerd asking for help practically in tears. I ran out of the classroom and told my brother about everything at home. Dean came up with an idea that worried me no less than that day's humiliation. My brother suggested that I overcome my biggest fear, fly on a paraglider, and post a video on social media. On any other day, I would have definitely said no to such madness. But at that moment, I had to prove that I wasn't such a coward and knew how to have fun. Moreover, I really wanted to get back at Miranda. After my extreme videos, she would definitely regret what she had done. That evening, my brother and I went to his base in the mountains. Dean immediately warned me. In our state, you could only fly with an instructor until you turned 18, so he tied me tightly to himself. But even so, I was terrified. Dean started to run, and my childhood fears suddenly came back. I planted my feet on the ground and screamed as loudly as I could. Of course, after that, my brother cancelled everything, and I got out of the equipment, embarrassed. I came back home in a terrible mood. After all, I would definitely not be able to prove my classmates wrong now, and they would keep mocking me. The next morning, my fears were confirmed, but I definitely hadn't been expecting what happened. 
In the morning, I found a diaper glued to my locker with a note inside. This is for you. In case you go to the climbing wall again, you can't imagine how furious I was. I looked around, but I couldn't find my worst enemy. Miranda, among the laughing crowd, I had to, I absolutely had to show her what I was really capable of. Oddly enough, anger fueled me, and that evening, I took off for the first time and flew over our area on a paraglider with my brother. Of course, it was terribly scary, but when I landed, I suddenly caught myself feeling something unexpected. I had liked paragliding, so I started to come to my brother's base almost every day to grow used to the heights. Finally, I decided to film my flight on an action camera. The video turned out really cool. I was about to post it on social media when I suddenly thought, what if everyone would laugh at me even more after that? After all, the video showed that I was flying with my brother and not by myself, and that could become a new reason for mockery. Besides, I didn't want to just shock everyone, but also humiliate Miranda, just like she had humiliated me. But I didn't know how to do that yet. I hadn't seen Miranda since that evening at the climbing wall. She probably felt too ashamed to look me in the eye. That's what I thought, until I met her on the beach when my brother and I landed after yet another flight. When I took off my equipment, the girl ran up to me and spoke as if nothing had happened. Let's go to the beach tomorrow, Miranda suggested cheerfully. I was about to tell that traitor everything I thought of her when a perfect plan was suddenly born in my head. I told Miranda I would love to see her there and went home, satisfied. The next morning, I was glowing with happiness when my brother and I went to his base. Dean couldn't help but notice and asked me about my great mood. I told him the truth. Today, I will shoot the video I started flying for, but I kept the most important thing a secret from my brother, the way I would do it. I decided to film my flight using two cameras. I held one of them with my hands and set the other one on a tripod on the mountain. When my brother started to run the edge of the cliff, I stopped us abruptly. I lied and said I had forgotten to turn on the static camera and asked Dean to do it. But as soon as my brother left, I closed my eyes, ran, and took off the ground. Somewhere in the distance, Dean was shouting angrily, but I had bigger things to worry about. As I was paragliding, I saw Miranda waiting for me on the beach where we had agreed to meet. She was sunbathing and didn't suspect a thing. I descended and, as I was flying past her, pulled off the top of her swimsuit. Miranda jumped up, covered herself with a towel, and ran away to the whistles and laughter of boys. I was ecstatic. After all, the camera had filmed everything I needed, both my flight and Miranda's humiliation. That evening, I sent the video to the group chat and got a lot of approving comments. But at home, my mood was ruined. Dean had told my parents what I had done and they scolded me for lying and acting recklessly. In the morning, everything was great once again. My classmates greeted me with applause. In just one day, I went from being a loser to the most popular guy in school. Boys were praising me for my courage and, of course, my unusual prank on Miranda. I was happy as a little boy when Alain suddenly came up to me and said, it turns out you're a normal dude. I'm sorry about that video from the climbing wall. I couldn't believe my ears, but then Alain told me what had really happened. It turned out Alain had liked Miranda for a long time, but she liked me. Alain was trying to understand why such a pretty girl liked a nerd like me, followed us to the climbing wall and filmed me. Then Alain had sent the video of the group chat from an anonymous account. He'd hoped that after my classmates made fun of me, Miranda would stop trying to get closer to me. But Miranda hadn't been deterred by their taunts and had invited me to a new date on the beach. And then I'd ruined everything myself. I was standing in the middle of the school hallway feeling like I had been struck by lightning. I was such an idiot. That whole time, Miranda had sincerely been on my side and hadn't cared about the opinion of others. Meanwhile, I had been so focused on it that I'd made my brother worry and humiliated the only person who was supporting me. I immediately found Miranda at school and started apologizing, but she pretended I didn't exist. That went on for a week. No matter what I did, Miranda kept ignoring me. And then I came up with an unusual idea. I set up a camera in front of me and talked about everything that had happened. About being afraid to admit the fear of heights, being blinded by anger and not even realizing who had really filmed that damn video, and of course about coming up with a stupid prank with the swimsuit just to look cool. I asked Miranda for forgiveness and sent the video to the group chat. 
Since I had embarrassed her in public, it was only right that I should apologize in front of everyone as well. The next morning at school, I expected my classmates to start bullying me. But all of a sudden, one by one, they started to praise me for being brave. None of the guys thought they would have been able to talk so openly about their fears as I had. Alain apologized once again for that video, and admitted that he would never have done that had he known about my phobia. And Miranda forgave me in the end. This story taught me to accept myself with all my fears and not to give in to emotions. This is the SCP Foundation, a secret organization that finds and studies anomalous objects all over the planet. These are the Foundation's secret files. You may already be familiar with them. And these are the stories of ordinary people who got lucky to encounter the most horrifying creatures in the world. The SCP Chronicles reveal new details about the anomalous objects you didn't know before. 